Welcome back to Punk Rock. Fuck's sake. End of the night. Welcome back to Tied Down TV, the Punk Rock Opinion Show with me, Jeff. I'm Danny. And today we're doing top five 90s punk and hardcore albums. And instead of splitting it and having a video just on 90s punk, 90s hardcore, we put them together. And the reason for that is basically because, well, mine, me and you, we have... We find a common ground on most areas of punk and hardcore. Yeah, I'd say so, yeah. Um, doesn't matter what genre it is. Or what, however, when it comes to the 90s, this is probably one era where our tastes literally split. Yeah. They splinter. And a lot of the stuff you have picked is a lot of stuff you were into when I first met you. That's right, yeah. We met each other just after the 90s. Yeah, early 2000s. Around, yeah, yeah, very early 2000s. And I guess the stuff... That I picked is the stuff I was listening to when you met me. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, you know what I mean? And, and we were kind of, you know, um, it's kind of funny that when when you think about it, when we met, there was kind of like a little, your group of mates and my group of mates was a little bit of a, 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 a you know, kind yeah, of, yeah. you know, a little bit of like, and it was before we got, we, 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 when we did finally meet, it was like, you know, we found we had common ground in a lot of other definitely. areas. But it's funny that in the 90s, punk and hardcore field, our tastes are so yeah, far apart. Yeah. I think it. I think it represents quite well, though. Like, and we've said, like you mentioned it many times, haven't we? That we've both come in to punk and hardcore from two different, yeah. you know, two different sides of it, basically. And yeah. these are these are prime examples of that. Yeah. So when thinking about my picks, I've definitely some of it's nostalgic. Like I went back and listened to some albums by like No Effect stuff like that, and some stuff just doesn't really hold up as much for me now that I can't I can't back it up and say this is fucking great because some of it's still good and I have picked a couple some yeah. of it I listened to that I used to like back then and, mm-hmm. and, and I thought nah, I'm not really having this anymore it's not really yeah. for me but uh, there is a couple that have always stuck with me and the, and the very first pick I'm going to pick now is one that's just it, it, I, I have to pick it when it's all about 90s punk and I picked and I'll come the wolves by Rancid I know I know I know probably get a bit of stick for picking it I know I get the hate I do I do get it but when it comes to Rancid, right, it was Nirvana, it was Green Day, and then it was Rancid. That, they were the three bands that, that kind of formed me towards punk music, hardcore music, and so on. So I saw the video for the song Salvation, which isn't on this album, it's actually on Let's Go, but it's still, it's, it's one of my favourite tunes by them, to be fair. But I saw the video to it, blew my mind. I was 14, 15 years old, something like that around that time anyway and it just fucking I was like whoa what's this what they're the coolest looking guys I've ever seen with the big fucking mohawks and leathers on running from the, the cops and you know in this ghetto in California and this this is the first album I bought by them it's probably the first album a lot of people buy them because it's got their biggest tunes on it it's got Time Bomb it's got Ruby Soho Roots Radicals but it's got it's just 19 songs and I don't think there's a dud on it like they're all it's just so well written it's great songwriters they're definitely the peak of their powers here as well I still watch them live if they ever come over. They only come over every like, 10 years now or so. And their set list is littered pretty heavy with songs from this album, even though they've done multiple ones after it. I just, every time I put it on, even now, I still, if I listen to it, I still, it just takes me back a little bit and I still get, I still enjoy it, I still get excited. Even the songs I've heard 5,000 times, you know, your, your time bombs and stuff like that. I still get a little buzz off it, still get a kick out of it. You know, the, the minor threat uh, cover there. See, they put this out around the time when everyone was fucking blowing up in, in that American punk Green Day's offsprings. They were courted by loads of major labels, by Madonna as well for their, um, is it Maverick uh, label? And uh, they turned all down, stayed on Epitaph, and, you know, went on and maybe didn't have the success they could have had capitalising on this. But this is still a massive album. And for me, it's still, it's got to be picked when I talk about 90s punk, the formative band for me. Cool. It's mad that you said like it was like Nirvana rancid. Like for me, that was kind of like me. I, like Nirvana were like my first like big thing into, into yeah. that realm. Um, but that's you'd say that was your like gateway album to what opened to everything else. You'd say basically. Yeah. yeah. Well, this is mine, and that is Hatebreed. Satisfaction is death of desire. Um, I got into the. I, I actually got into the band Stamping Ground first, and someone said to me, um, I don't know how that happened, but I ended up discovering Stamping Ground before these, and someone said to me. Someone, I guess, more in the know. Um, and this would have been before these released Perseverance. Someone said, have you heard Hatebreed? The, the, the American stamping ground, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, this is this is definitely before they turned into the most generic sound and metal band ever. Do you know what I mean? This is a brilliant straight-up hardcore album. Um, it's full of classics, Puritan, Not One Truth. There is not one truth cast in the stone. Only lies cast in the flames. 
um, deceived through an act of uh, perceive, uh, conceived through an act of violence. Sorry, um, and um, worlds apart. Just it, it's full of it's it's like you say you've said before they're, they're meat and potatoes hardcore, yeah. which they are. But this is this is it done really well, and um, it's a solid. It's a solid. Uh, I'd say a solid nine out it's of the ten. The best thing we ever did. Easily, like, absolutely easily. Down. Yeah, um, yeah. Hey, breed satisfaction is death desire. My first pick, Gateway album. Nice. Pick number two for me then. I've gone with No Division, Hot Water Music. This is a band that I've actually heard the first time I heard band was a Flight and a Crash, which came out in two thousand and one. I think got like, do you remember Kerrang? Got five Ks in Kerrang, so I went and bought the CD. Loved it. it great. You listen to Kla- uh, You listen to what Kerrang say, do you? I did when I was that young. Not always, but you know what I mean. <laughs> How else did you find music then? Like mm. you read a review, it sounded good. So I got that album. Thought it was decent. The one after it's better. Caution. This is still great. Though. This is the one I probably return to the most. No division from '99, I think. It's just fucking cool, man. It's just it's mm. such a tight sounding band. It sounds massive. Like these really like rough, gruffy kind of vocal deliveries. I believe them though that it's you know it's heartfelt. And what they believe in what they're singing about sounds that like that to me anyway it, I think in 2019 this shows uh, like this album's very popular with their fans they, they did like a poll on Twitter and this was picked so they played this in full on that tour of most other songs I think as well but it's uh, double vocals on it isn't it uh, Chris Wallard and, and Chuck Reagan who's produced by Walter Schreifels from Rival Schools Youth of Today Grill Biscuits you know what I mean um, this is the, the third album, I think. It's just fucking full of tunes as well. It's like it's it's catchy. It's yeah, it's great. I think mean, ten or eleven songs. They're all clocking around three minutes. You know, classics, rooftops, Southie Spurs, free radio games. It's full of it's full of great songs. It's it gets sometimes talked about in a um, little bit of emo y post hardcore as well. Shack and see. I just think it's got like like that southern sound that a lot of American punk had in the nineties. Your bands like Avail as well, kind of like had a little bit of a similar thing. But it's fucking great. Go and, go and check it out. Hot Water Music, No Division. Uh, my next pick. Um, I'd say when I found out about this, my love for New York hardcore was really in, starting to pick up. It was really in, everyone knew I was massive into Biohazard, and someone started recommending me other Brooklyn bands, obviously yeah. Life of Agony, yeah. River Runs Red, which is unfortunate not to make it into this list. But uh, another gateway album for me, Marauder, Master Killer. Um, it was recommended to me, like I say, because someone said, because I was going on about Biohazard so yeah. much, and this along with Life of Agony was recommended. If I could describe their sound, it's very mid-paced. I'd say maybe Cro-Mags mixed with Slayer, possibly, but without the speed, maybe, you know, <laughs> South of Heaven. Kind of, yeah, um, okay. yeah, um, again, loads of brilliant tunes on here. My favorite is Life is Pain, um, and then obviously the title track, Master Killer, Downfall of Christ. And the reason I was attra- when I was recommended this, part of the reason I was attracted to it was someone told me about the band, I did some research, and their albums came up. and I noticed with this one, obviously, it had like this guy with the sword on, but it was called Master Killer. And Master Killer, in my mind, um. Obviously, people associate with Wu Tang Clan, but the first thing I thought of was the Gordon Liu movie, Thirty Six Chambers of Shaolin, which another title for it is Master Killer, which I'm sure they got their title for that. Yeah, I imagine that's where he got his, his yeah. name from. So yeah. I thought New York hardcore kung fu movies, it's it's got to be amazing, and it was. Um, another one of my gateway albums, Marauder, Master Killer. Not a huge fan of their other two that they did, Five Deadly Venoms and uh, Brutality, but this is. A solid, solid, again, 9 out of 10. Master Killer, Marauder. Nice, nice, nice. Right, let's pick number three. Another formative band for me from the 90s. Well, 18 years old, but Bad Religion. Against the Grain. It's fucking, it's, I love this band, especially this period. This is their fifth album. And it's their third, though, in a, in a run. 88, 89, 90. Bang, bang, bang. This came out in 90. But they did Suffer. Change the game. No control a year later. It's fucking amazing. Amazing. And then this. It changes after this a little bit. I think the drummer, the, the drummer changed and, and generated the one after this. It's, it's pretty good as well, actually, to be fair. Um, it gets a bit patchy up and down. There, discography from there on in. But for me, this is still fucking great. It's still a solid, solid album. All the tunes on here are class. Modern Man. 
it's got 21st century digital boy which they re-record this is the better version though by the way because they did re-record it when they signed to atlantic funny enough when i was talking about rants of not signing to a major staying on epitaph which is owned by brett from bad religion they decided to fucking have a go at seeing what they could do with the majors they went to atlantic and re-recorded that tunes i think the label asked them to to be fair um but Anyway, I digress a little bit, but it's, it's fucking crazy. It's just, you know, it's kind of what you expect. It's not reinventing the wheel. Mm. You said meat and potatoes hardcore before. I guess you just call that, like, meat and potatoes melodic punk. Mm. <laughs> like, it's straight up. It's got the harmonies. It's great songwriting, great lyrics. You know, they get called the thesaurus punk, don't they, sometimes? Because they use a lot of big, mm. complicated words. And, you know, they're both the two main songwriters, Brett and uh, Greg, Greg, are both, you know, highly intelligent, got degrees in, in areas and stuff like that. But anyway... Check them out, like I say, any of those three albums would fucking blow you away. This is great though as well against the grain. Uh, CD for me. Boston, Blood for Blood, Spit My Last Breath. I'm going to keep it short because this is a no-nonsense album and it is a fucking lesson in negativity, this album. Fight music is the best way to describe this. Mm. Um, Life shit, work shit, everything shit. Life's fucked me over. Nothing is good. That is Blood for Blood. Um, the best tunes, I'd say, on this are the slow ones. Mm. Title track, Spit My Last Breath. Okay. And also, if, let's say, in a mad world, God came down. Mm-hmm. Say he came down and he had a basketball top on and some Rick to Life dreadlocks. And he had a gun. I don't, don't know why God would need a gun to kill me, but let's say he had a gun. And he said, Danny, my son. Son of God. No. Yeah, yeah. I want you to tell me. <laughs> I want you to tell me what the hardest tune is ever. The hard, I want the hardest hardcore song ever. I want the hardest shit. You know, like that Tenacious D song. I want the hard. Oh, you're gonna die. Best song in the world. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I would say Chaos by Blood for Blood, right. which is a bonus track on this. I think it was actually a demo track. But that song, honestly, the first time I ever heard it was on Boston Beatdown. Yeah. And just that build up. Of, so I hate you. And. As soon as I heard it, I was just like, oh my God. I felt like I did not, I felt like I felt like I was bleeding inside. It was that violent sound, and you know what I mean? But yeah, Blood for Blood, Spit My Last Breath. Check out Chaos. There we go. All right, pick number four. So the last couple of picks, I've, I've saved the ones that I still spin quite regularly now. This one I definitely do. Mush, Leatherface, came out in 91, UK, Sunderland. Just straight up again, just, just fucking great like a bit like hot water music and he also did actually do a split in that you know it's tight gruff vocals like his vocal delivery has been described a bit like lemmy's they were like called like someone said the sound especially this this album is like husker do mixed with motorhead i guess meaning the vocal delivery more motorhead because musically it's definitely you know it's on a par with that like husker do kind of thing uh frankie stubbs was the singer he, he passed away in 2012 unfortunately but it's just so catchy, man. So fucking catchy. So many great songs. Like, as gruff, gravelly as his vocal is, and, like, when you first hear it, mate, it takes a minute to adjust. Always finds that melody. He'll find that hop, and it will earworm in there. I'm telling you, like, ah, oh, what's the songs? Like, just how lonely is great. I don't want to be the one to say it. Pandora's Box, not a day goes by. That's probably my favourite. Springtime, it's full of fucking great songs. If you get all of the CD, it's got a few extra tracks that are covered of um, Message in a Bottle by the police actually do a decent decent version of it they've done a good version of uh, can't help falling in love with you as well uh, but i highly recommend this like if, if you if you want something with a bit of melody and that as well but it's it's cool it's fucking yeah. great go and check it out mush leatherface i'm telling you maybe a little bit of an undersung classic from the 90s i think should be getting a bit more love you know what i like i like it when bands have got like a dangerous story yeah you know when they've got like a bit of a, like an um a bit of like a sketchy mythology behind them yeah and um, this next record I'm going to pick, this next band, their story rivals any hip-hop story, mm-hmm. any Norwegian, Scandinavian black metal story. Yeah. We're talking drugs, murder, violence, armed robbery, all of it. And the band are from Detroit, and you may have guessed who it is. And the album, and it's Cold As Life, Born To Land Hard. You can't talk about... Uh, Called his life without talking about their original vocalist, Rodney Barger, aka Ron Beauty. Um, a guy who was, uh, shall we say, uh, well, let's just put it this way from 
all the research I've done, all the all the interviews I've seen from the from the CTYC guys over the years. This is a guy who was both feared, respected, hated, mm. um, fiercely loyal to the people he loved, um, and unfortunately, he was murdered by a guy called Richard Wehrstein in his sleep over something that is the details are sketchy. Yeah. You know, it's it's never really been revealed why it happened, but the guy put two three bullets behind his ear. Um, but I've seen interviews with people who obviously were friends of Ron Beauties who said, you know, when it happened, they weren't surprised. Mm. He was a guy who, who, who his his kind of he was kind of like an enforcer yeah. in the Detroit scene, and he 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 made a lot of enemies, and even some of his own friends, you know, would get into fights with him regularly. He was someone who very much if he, if you pissed him off, he he would he would handle business and ask questions later. Do you know what I mean? And um, the best stuff by Calder's Life, I'd say, is the demos with Ron Beauty singing. Mm. Um, I'd say if you want to listen to anything, listen to uh, listen to the song Terror Zone off the de- off the, the the I think it's the '93 demo. Really good. And um, by the time this album came out, unfortunately, he was he, at that time he'd been murdered. And Jeff Gunnels, the guitarist, had moved to vocals. And if I had one criticism of this album, um, is that the music's brilliant, but I guess he's kind of got an effect on his vocal. And a lot of the lyrics on this are some of the hardest lyrics you will ever you you read you know what I mean. They're some of the hardest lyrics ever written, and I just think with Jeff Gunnell's vocals, you don't really you can't really make them out too well. There's a lot of effect on his vocals, oh. which I kind of think lets it down just that little tiny bit. But Jeff Gunnell's himself was later uh, sentenced to 20 years for armed robbery. Right, yeah. So their their story is a a very interesting one. It's there was a documentary. Uh, being made, I don't know what ever happened to that. Mm. There is a, a a trailer for it on yeah, YouTube. It's a Kickstarter and it makes the goal. Yeah, something. but there there is there's is a story that needs to be told fully. Um, like I say, brilliant brilliant album, brilliant story. Um, cold as life, born to land hard. Even the fucking name of the t- name of the album is amazing. Nice. So pick number five for me. It's another one, big band for me. Propaganda, less talk, more rock. Propaganda, part of the Fat Records crew of the 90s, but a band that, that even very early on didn't really want to associate once. They came out like, you know, they, they were playing with any bands who'd come through the town from Winnipeg in Canada. They came they used to play a lot of DIY shows as well, um, basement shows, things like that. Mm-hmm. Very, very left, very hard on their political ideals. Now, the first album was a little bit goofier. Yeah. And they got lumped in with your lag wagons and your, you know, effects and, and, and the, you know, because they, even they said it themselves, well, you're on the label, people are going to associate you with those bands. And their sound is credited, especially the first album, with the fat record sound. This was them to already, they, they decided, they said, look, we looked at the people who were coming to the shows and they thought, well, what we're saying, like, you're not, you're not hearing it, you're not listening to what we're saying, you're not getting it, because you are all kind of not, people, not everyone, obviously, at the shows, but there were people coming to the shows who they just didn't want associating with whether that be because they were you know racist fascist homophobic so in 96 when you're putting on like gay positive for instance pro-feminist animal friendly on your arm cover it's it's a bit more oh hang on than it would be maybe today and they said you know it sold half what the first album sold they, they said you could definitely tell you know they started doing that the shows after this album and they, they would have had a lot less of the the, the people he liked the confrontation, Chris, the singer, back in this day especially. And he, and he said this with them, nailing their, their colours to the mast and saying, this is who we are, and, you know, we're not going to apologise for it. And he used to provoke, and it's called Less Talk, More Rock, because he used to just speak and speak. He said some shows he played talk more than he'd sing, like. There's still a bit of humour on it, you know, the only good fascist is a very dead fascist, stuff like that. But it's harder, it's faster than the first hour, you know, it just it hits, it's, it's over in half an hour. I'd say it's songs about you know political ideas a lot of animal rights stuff on here as well it's fucking great it's a big band for me very formative he went on to do more thrashier stuff uh john k Sampson, the bass player as well from this album this was the last one he was only left he's one of the weaker bands and, and they got todd kowalski and he used to be an ice spy and stuff so the sound got harder from there they went more metallic in, in places definitely playing faster it's did it, did it one of my you know one of, a big band for me one of my favorites especially from that period Let's talk about rock. Definitely go and check it out. I'm going to give this one a big build up. Okay. It's all theatre. So, 
back in the early 2000s, early to mid 2000s, say it to my face promotions out of Manchester. Um, on all their gigs, the sound guy had always put like a lot of hip hop between bands, you know, between bands, they always put like music yeah. on in the background. Yeah. And he'd always play this one album, um, this one hardcore album. And every time, I used to must have drive my mates crazy because I'd say, I really want to know what this is. This is fucking brilliant. I want to know what it is. I, want to... I was quite shy though back then. And they'd be saying to me all the time, just go and ask him, go and ask him who this is. Because literally, you'd go to every Say It To My Face show and this album would come on and I'd, I'd really want to know what the fuck it was. It was it was unbelievably good. And then one day, you know what happened? I actually grew up here and I went over and spoke to him, didn't I? And I said, excuse me, mate, what is this album that you're playing? Who is this? Who is this? And you know what it was? Death Car From Every Word by Earth Mover. Now... This is a this is a statement, and I'm gonna mean every word of this. This is my favorite hardcore album of the '90s, and I'll tell you why. It's all about the vocal delivery, right? These are my favorite vocals ever put on any hardcore record. The singer just sounds like it's just full of despair, and he just sounds like he's crawling his way out of his own insanity, crawling and just clinging on like that. And I fucking love it, honestly. The vocals on this are unbelievable. It just sounds desperate. It just sounds desperate, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And um, members of this band went on to form Walls of Jericho, which to me, this is a lot better than Walls of Jericho. Um, full of amazing tunes. Probably the standout tune is Money. It's not about money. We're not about money. But yeah, um, I don't really know what else I can say. It's just that fucking good. It may be a little bit, if I had to try and describe this sound, it's hard. Maybe a little bit Earth crisis -y, maybe a little bit chokeholdish, that kind of thing. Mm. Um, but honestly, these are so slept on. It does my head in that not many people know who, know who these are. Do you know what I mean? They did an album before this, um, which it's but this is the one. They did two albums. This is this is the fucking one. Another band from Detroit, like I mean Detroit. When you think about it, they've had some fucking brilliant bands. Negative yeah, Approach, yeah. Cold as Life, Earth Mover. Fucking Motown Records. Fucking how much good stuff come from it? Didn't Stooges come from Stooges come yeah, from Detroit? I'm, I'm MC5? Five, yeah. Fucking hell. Yeah, so there's a... a, a you know what? When you think about it, wow, Detroit, do you know what I mean? But yeah, this is my favourite album of the 90s. And... Oh, I, I don't even know what to say. But Death Car from Every Word, Earth Mover. There you go. They're not top five picks. So uh, what well, you have an honourable mention? I'm going to go for an honourable mention. I've actually brought my honourable mention because I made a mistake and I actually... I actually, without realising, planned for six, six albums, albums without, without realising it. Nice. I'm going to go Life, Love, Regret by Unbroken. Sounds like something some like yeah. goalie would have on their wall, doesn't it? From, from nice. yeah, yeah, yeah. Wine o'clock. But yeah, I picked, <laughs> I picked it. Yeah, exactly. But I picked this for the influence that it had on like, this is like one of the first kind of um, examples of metalcore, I okay. guess. Yeah, cool. Straight Edge. Um, amazing. Just obviously when you think of the bands that these... These uh, influenced yeah. later. We did an album before this called Ritual, but uh, this is you could say see how much they've matured by this point. Nice. Brilliant songwriting. Nice. For my honorable pick, I've gone with uh, oh, Dylan's of Four Midwest songs for the Americas, and I picked this because I think like when you, people talk about pop punk and what you think of pop punk, this this is what pop punk sounds to me anyway. This is pretty fucking cool, very catchy, very tuny, and Green Day. Must love this fucking band, I tell you, because they've definitely stolen a riff or two. If you go and listen to the song, it's it's, it's the first song on side B on this. Oh, you've got the vinyl, but it's a uh, double whiskey, coke, no ice, all one word. And tell me if you've heard it before, because it's, it's it's American idiot. It's what it is basically. But this is fucking great, great pop punk, just tuny, mellow, melodic. Check it out. What are we doing next week? So yeah, that's it. Top five next week is uh, top five feature films, movies. Yeah. Featuring you know punk. As an aesthetic yeah. soundtrack, you know, what you, you get the idea. Yeah. So looking forward to that yeah, one. Yeah, it'll be a good one. Thanks for tuning in. And uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, ring that bell. Go and jump over on the socials and uh, like us, follow us, Instagram, Facebook, all that. Cheers. See you next time. It's what I think.